Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 513, Men's Hormones, Testosterone and Estradiol, How Testosterone and Anastrozole Pellets Create the Healthiest Hormone Environment in Men. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the challenges in life is having balance, homeostasis. Trying to have balance is something that we always struggle to do. Part of that balance involves what are our hormones and how do they work. In men, as we age, our testosterone balance changes and our estrogen balance changes. It is possible to do something to restore that balance. So if you, if you obtain treatment at a place like BioBalance Health, where the focus is on establishing a healthy balance of hormone interactions as we age, it helps us prevent and avoid many of the illnesses of the aging process. So we want to find what is that healthy balance. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, a, an aromatase enzyme uh, Call and how it works on testosterone that men generate to convert it into estrogen. And we need a certain amount of that. We need a legitimate balancing amount of that to keep us getting the benefits of both testosterone and estrogen. We don't want the load to skew in either direction. And that's a real challenge because primarily the treatment that is involved is the use of uh, an aromatase inhibitor, something called anastrozole or Arimidex. And it can be given to you orally. If it is given to you orally, there are side effects that are problematic. And you don't want those. There are other ways to get it. It can be added to a pellet that is primarily a testosterone pellet with a smidgen of Arimidex added and inserted into your hip. That way you don't have the side effects. So, so Dr. Moffin is going to go effects. through and talk about all of that for us. So yeah. tell us about Arimidex, what it is okay. and how it works, Arimidex and then the side effects. Is the um, is, is the common name, but it, the generic name is anastrozole. So we know that as men age, when they come in, we test their testosterone and their estradiol and their estrone. We look so at estradiol and estrone are two types of estrogen. Two types of estro- estrogen. Okay. Men make both of them. When they're younger, usually they make just a little bit of estradiol, just a little bit of estrone, and lots of testosterone. Mm -hmm. That's how men feel great, okay? But if you notice, if you look at your friends and look at over time, you usually see men at about 40-something start getting big around the middle. Mm -hmm. They start getting round in the face. He shifts uncomfortably. (laughs) They get more fat on them. And when you look at their labs, the fat equals the estrogen because testosterone is converted into estrogen in the fat. But it's a positive feedback system. The more fat you have, the more estrogen you make. The more estrogen you have, the more fat you make. Okay. So it keeps, it keeps going. It's hard to break that cycle. So primarily around the waist. Yes, pri- but, and, and around the face. And around the face. Mm-hmm. But if you have too much estrogen, Mm -hmm. you create what are called man boobs. And you also get man boobs. That's right. And so we've all seen men that have them. Yeah. They have, you know, and you worry about teenage boys that have them. Right. And that means that that their balance means that they've got too much estrogen. Now it could be, it can come from aging, but there are young men, like you said, teenage boys or young Mm -hmm. men who have too much estrogen genetically. They make too much of their testosterone into estrogen or because of their um, their lives, they just sit and play with video games, and they don't exercise, they don't eat the right stuff. It's about taking too many carbohydrates, not enough protein. But that causes an imbalance in young men. We also see it as a normal aging process. 
that we don't want because it leads to diseases that we'll talk about that you can avoid if you can control this conversion. So, so with adolescent males, is mm-hmm. that a fire alarm? If you see that, if you see man boobs and overly large waist that mm-hmm. says exercise, eat right, but also get your hormone balances checked? I would exercise and eat right first, see if it makes a difference. Yeah. And then, you know, get your, get your hormones tested. Because okay. if it doesn't get better, there is something genetically inherently wrong with your metabolism. And this Arimidex could actually help. It could actually stop that process. Yeah. So what a great thing. A, a lifetime of being obese and miserable and crying too easily and having man boobs and being made fun of in the locker room. Right. All those terrible things that happen to teenage boys when they don't look the same as another boy right. or they look completely different than the other boys. That can be avoided by using medication, and that's why this medication is, is so pivotal even for men. We started out using it for women with breast cancer. Okay. It protect, protects breast, women from breast cancer recurrence. It protects them from getting breast cancer, and we treat breast cancer with it. So it's, it's, so it's a, kind of a serendipity. You, originally, you focused on women mm-hmm, and breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Then you discovered it also worked on men because of the man boobs issue or just— well. It, it, it works on men. That was one of the first things because it's breast cancer, man boobs. Right. And the old treatment for man boobs was, it, it was archaic. They used to remove them like a mastectomy. Oh, my God. And, they, and what they looked like was god-awful, terrible. They didn't look like a regular guy. I mean, they looked like they'd been scarred up and, it's, and dented in. And I mean, it was, not an, it was a plastic surgery procedure, but it did not wow. look good. It was not a, it wasn't like when they do that. Of course, it's not pretty when they do that to women either. Right. But they didn't have cancer. They just had fat. So that's not where you go to get this fixed. You go to chemistry. You don't go to, to surgery. To surgery. So this is, this is one of the things I want to get across because I don't want young men to be disfigured for life because they have man boobs. Yes, you want to get rid of them, but you can get rid of them with medicine. Yes. So an astrazole is a wonderful drug, but it has its side effects if you take it orally. So, and that's how it's usually given, mm-hmm. is, is usually a pill. Now, not everyone gets these, but, you, but many women, more than men, get arthritis, arthritic pain from taking it orally. Their hands hurt. They hurt when they, when they move their joints all over because it lowers the estrogen so much that they, don't, they, they aren't able to have the benefits of estrogen in their joints. We don't want to wipe out estrogen. We just want to get it to a low manageable level in both men and women. So, in fact, women need more, but we want to get it low in men. So, but men don't feel the arthritic pain as much. I still have had some men with that. It increases your risk of blood clots if you take it orally, but not if you put it in a pellet. So not if you take it under the skin, non-orally, it doesn't go through your liver, it, it doesn't until it's all been used, but it actually will go to work in your body first before you break it down, and that's, that's the difference. It doesn't increase the clotting, the clotting factors. Right. So uh, oral does, non-oral or in a pellet form doesn't. Um, you get headaches with it sometimes from not from getting so little estrogen or just because of the oral um, delivery system. So in other and podcasts... Cyst- and swelling. You get swelling as well. In other podcasts, you make distinctions among headache types. Mm-hmm. So you like migraine headaches, mm-hmm. uh, cold headaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are more what, like migraine headaches. These are like migraines. Right. Okay. And, and so if a woman or a man is taking this, uh-huh. these are the side effects of this drug. So it's not perfect. And it wasn't perfect when we just could take it orally. But now... When I take care of men who have high estrogen or they have a lot of belly fat or they have man boobs or they have other things that, that indicate high estrogen, then I test them and they have high estrogen, estrone and or estradiol. I give them testosterone plus a Rimidex in their pellet. None of these side effects occur. I mean, none. It does no swelling, no headaches. Nothing. No, no increased risk of blood, no clots. blood clots. And everybody's... And, because of this difference, people look in the PDR and they go, oh, it's going to cause blood clots. Well, that's only with oral. Right. So I can say to somebody, your doctor may think because you're having surgery that you're going to have a high risk of blood clots, but you're not. They're under the skin so they don't cause blood clots. Mm-hmm. So that is very safe. Now, there sometimes comes a point where I don't have to give 
somebody a Rimidex anymore or an Astrozole, same thing, mm -hmm. in their pellets. And that's when they lose their fat. They, lo they lose enough fat that they aren't making a lot of a lot of estrogen. So you put them on a regimen. You give them the hormone balance that they need that I includes the Arimidex. Right. So that their testosterone balance and their estrogen balances are correct. High, high testosterone, low estrogen. And then you put them on a diet and exercise mm -hmm. program. I, you also need to be healthy. I mean, this doesn't work just magic. <laughs> just not a magic pill, panacea. You, know, you this, actually have to put in some effort. So right. I do my part, you do your no, part. No, and I think that needs and, to be stressed, and yeah. you do stress it all yeah, the time. I do when I talk to my patients when they yes. come in that they have to do their part of this, and if they don't, they're not going to feel 100% better. I can't I can't go home with them and cook This more. is really true. And I've heard Dr. Maupin say on any number of occasions <laughs> how frustrated she is when she says to a man or a woman, okay, you got to cut back on your alcohol. And they're like, but I, I have to have a drink in the afternoon or I have to have a drink in the evening. And I only have two glasses. Well, that's half a bottle. Yeah, two glasses. <laughs> <laughs> My doctor said cut it down to one glass. You know? Yeah, or or, yeah. or they say, you know, I can't stop drinking sugared soda, the worst thing you yes. can do. Yes, oh my gosh. I mean, you might as well just... They go to, go to <laughs> Quick terrible. Trip and get those big gulp yeah. things, half you gallons. You think it was their best friend. Yeah. I mean, it's an addiction. And so they have to and it's a killer. slowly wean down. And and my trick is that I can make them feel better mm -hmm. with the testosterone and the estrogen so that they don't have to depend on that to make them feel better. So that to for me, that's that's my mission. My mission is to... Is, is to try to get them healthy them, and keep them yeah, healthy and, and and give them something else to live for okay not just to drink a big gulp so let's talk about why there are concerns about high levels of estrogen in men especially as they age it's what not are just the, an aesthetic issue it's, no it's no it's not just, just how you look are you chubby do you have man boobs right i mean um estrogen in men causes prostate enlargement that increases their risk of prostate cancer so being obese having a lot of fat increases your risk of prostate cancer. So getting that, that estrogen down is very important. So that's, that's a biggie. Mm -hmm. Obesity is a disease in itself, and that causes diabetes, heart disease. So more estrogen causes, and, and a lack of more estrogen, lack of Arimidex, more estrogen causes all of those diseases through being obese. Obesity also increases your risk of all kinds of cancers. So obesity is bad. And, so, and diabetes. Right. Or did you just say that? I, yeah, I, I said blanked that out. with obesity. That's yeah. okay. Um, you can get a lot of estrogen because you drink a lot. I mean, alcohol goes through the liver and makes estrogen. So you can drink yourself into man boobs or you can drink yourself <laughs> into a beer belly. That's why they call it a beer belly. Yeah. So um, I can't combat that completely with the pellets and the arimidex. You have to do your part too. Mm -hmm. But... If you just decrease your, after you've got the fat, it's hard to get rid of it if you just decrease your intake. Yes. So it's frustrating. And oh, people you have to exercise. Say, it's not getting better, so I'm just going to drink. Well, and the older you get, you have to do two kinds of exercise. You have to do cardio for your mm -hmm. heart, and you have to do resistance for your muscles. Right. And you can't build the muscles if you don't have the testosterone. Right. And if you're converting <laughs> it to estrogen, you can't. I mean, it just Yeah, it's a never-ending spiral yeah. that makes you sick. So it's very, it's very important to get rid of the estrogen and increase the testosterone. Um, aging itself increases the t increases the estrogen. I didn't I didn't don't know if that came across. That just getting just getting older, old. just and that means just losing getting lower testosterone and just becoming less active actually causes you to have more fat, which then increases estrogen and just keeps. So it's a vicious cycle. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle, and yeah. we have to stop the cycle for you to get better. So, and another indicator, it's not a visible one that you see, like you see man boobs or, or beer bellies, mm -hmm. is increased emotionality. Yeah. The more estrogen a man makes, the more likely he is to have uh, visible emotional reactions to well, things. Well, we consider girl emotions, but I don't really consider it that. Like, because like crying over a dog commercial on TV. You see a little kid with a dog and your you know, tears run down your cheeks. I've never done that. And I've got plenty of estrogen. But it does something times happen with it. <laughs> with the guy Some with of my estrogen. male friends have confessed to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this kind of comes under the heading of high estrogens in men cause mm -hmm. cause weight gain, cause uh, free T or the active T, the ac active testosterone to decrease, so you feel like you're deficient in testosterone. Man boobs, prostate enlargement, prostate cancer. Decrease sex drive. Yeah, decrease sex drive. Estrogen opposes sex drive in men. 
too much okay. estrogen is going to cause you not to feel your testosterone and, and it's going to fill up the receptor sites in your brain so you don't have a sex drive. So, so does that also cause ED or is that just part of the mass of crap that comes <laughs> along with having too much estrogen? Estro estrogen? High estrogen can cause ED in itself. Okay. It lowers the ability of testosterone to work and to, and to attach the receptors. Estrogen attaches to the same receptor as testosterone. And if you have a lot of it, it fills them all up and testosterone is not as sticky. So it doesn't, it doesn't attach as well. So... Some of these things actually come from a treatment for men for testosterone, like the patch. Mm -hmm. The testosterone patch in men, 80, 60 to 80 percent of that becomes estrogen as it goes through your skin. So that's why it's not very successful as a treatment. Men don't stick to it because they don't get the sex drive. They don't, you know, it starts they don't get out the testosterone okay, part of the benefit. And then it gets worse when they get the estrogen. Right. So they have the never-ending increase in dose. Wow. So I, I really wanted to talk one about this. A case, case study. study. Uh -huh. I ha I had this guy. He's he's an amazing man. He has he has earned more money than I mean in his lifetime he came from nothing. He earned, he just knows how to earn money. Yeah. And uh, he started companies. He's he's changed companies. So he's an amazing brain. And when he came in my office, he weighed way over three fifty. He's about six two, and he was emotional. He had man boobs. He had a huge abdomen. He had fat everywhere. And he was miserable. He had no sex drive. His testosterone was very low and his estrogen was very high. And he said, I have always felt like this. I've been to every doctor all over the country that money can buy. I don't think you're going to be able to fix this, but you can give it a shot. <laughs> I'm going down the checklist and I finally got into your name. Yeah, so I, fi I finally you have decided I was desperate <laughs> and I come to see you. Don't you love it when yeah. you hear that? <laughs> Yeah, I'm the last. Yeah. Luckily, I'm the last one and not yeah. the second to the last or third to the last. So, so he came to see me and Carl did what I said. He, I, that's actually not his name, but right. um, he said he followed my diet. He followed my exercise program and I put testosterone and Arimidex in him and a lot of Arimidex in with the testosterone so that I would have an effect on the est estrogen level and increase his testosterone at once. He came back in. He was so happy. He, he had dropped 75 pounds in five wow. months. That's a lot. And yeah, he never lost huge. that much weight. He'd only just kept going up. And not by dieting. And not by, yeah. Not, yeah. not, not some kind of crash diet. You know, no. he was just eating normally. Yeah. But he wasn't eating, he wasn't eating junk. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't drinking quite as much. As no, you eat responsibly, but you don't go on a starvation diet. No, and lose. he wasn't doing that. This this had to do with the treatment. Yeah, he was ecstatically happy. This is more than he thought he was going to get, and it kept progressing until he was ideal weight. Hmm. And he actually had so much skin he had had to have it yeah. trimmed. You know, basically you have stretched your skin out, so you have to have that taken off. But he looked normal, and he said the very first visit after his pellets. He said, I have never felt normal in my whole life. I never felt like other boys and other men felt. Mm -hmm. I always felt kind of emotional and kind of slow and tired. And, and even though I was brilliant, he said, it may have been why I got so smart because I didn't move. But it was a genetic thing for him. He started out with this even when he was a teenager. Nobody paid attention or nobody knew what to do at the time. And now he is normal and he's like, I just didn't know men could have a sex drive like this. Mm -hmm. And that would, I, I contend, that would not have happened with straight testosterone. It just wouldn't have happened because the more testosterone you give, the more conversion. If somebody to... like that, they're going to make more estrogen. The more mm -hmm. testosterone, more estrogen. So this stopped that process. Right. It was, it was a miracle. I was so excited when I saw him the, the, uh, for his follow up visit because he just looked like a whole different man. And th then he went out, and <laughs> as he checked out, I was walking out to the desk to do something else. <laughs> He asked one of the patients for a date, <laughs> and he's not married. <laughs> yeah. He is now, but he wasn't married then. Yeah. And so, I mean, he said, that never would have happened. I started laughing because I was behind the desk. He goes, I never would have done this without you. <laughs> yeah. So when you see somebody like that, when someone like Carl comes into your office, you do a diagnosis. You take a medical history. You talk to them about what their experience has been. You do blood tests, and you find out what are their hormone balances. Mm -hmm. And then you make a treatment plan. Mm -hmm. And in his case, because of the estrogen content, mm -hmm. your treatment plan included 
the combined pellets, testosterone and anastrozole mm-hmm. or, or Remedex. Mm-hmm. And normally that's a, a 90-10 configuration. 90 testosterone, 10 uh, Percent. anastrozole. 90 milligrams, 10 milligrams, but it's still the percentage yeah. too. So I give a certain number, depending on his weight and his size, a certain number of those pellets mm-hmm. and a certain number of pure testosterone pellets. And that is kind of the art of the of the deal. Yeah. So so, but I I figured it out right for him. I changed his dose as he got thinner. Well, but you do that for everybody. You monitor their mm-hmm. dose, and and at mm-hmm. least once a year they have to have new blood tests. Right. You keep track of their symptoms. You even take photographs to say this is what you looked like when you came in. Right. This and is they, what you look like now. Oftentimes he remembered, of course. Yeah. But. but he, but most people don't remember what they look like. They don't remember how, how, either how big they were, how tired they looked, or how their skin looked so you know pale and 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 pasty. So they actually have to be shown. Yeah. And, and I read their old symptoms. Do you have this anymore? And they go, I never had that. Well, here's your writing. You you did have that. <laughs> you checked it. <laughs> so this is a true case study, and it's not unique in the practice. There are other situations. They have similar concerns because as men age, they make less testosterone, but the testosterone that they do make tends to get converted more and more into estrogen. So you want to rebalance your testosterone and get it right so that you can be healthy and have muscles and be strong, but you also want to balance your estrogen so that you don't overload to the other side. One of the ways that we can do that is through combining the testosterone and the Arimidex or the Anastrozole. So if you have concerns or questions about that, see Dr. Moffitt. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.